beautiful shot. Yeah, good, good so work. Worth it. Good work. And again, was that uh, was it different from from the TV work? M more blown up, maybe, or did you lo lose some spontaneity or, or anything? Jesus, no, no. Sorry. We, you know what? <laughs> all, yeah, it was. The thing is, in in in. The, the show was a learning experience. We were learning about each other, learning to trust each other. We were learning about it, our characters, about our relationships. We were feeling everything out. When we did Serenity, we really, all the homework had been done. All the hard work had been done. We hit the ground running. We were ready to go. Um, some of the crew members mentioned it. They said, wow, you guys can, we can really tell that you guys, you guys really get along. You really know what you're doing. You really, there's no question. Mm -hmm. It's flattering and, and true. We were ready and eager and waiting. I'm going to cry again. And uh, the character Mel, um, is it kind of a, a deeper or darker Han Solo? I thought this was more... Yeah, I would say Han Solo, if, if uh, minus the charm um, and the scampiness, plus a little more, yeah, if, if uh, Han Solo had been kicked around a little more by the Empire, I think you'd see a little more Malcolm Reynolds in But he was still, yeah, Han Solo, very lovable. Malcolm Reynolds, not so lovable. Easy, 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 to, easy not to like Malcolm Reynolds, especially if you're living with him, I think. He's a pretty angry guy, and, he, and he's and pushing much, people away constantly. How much can you identify yourself as such a character? <laughs> um, round about zero. <laughs> With the exception of my overdeveloped sense of vengeance. Um, yeah, my life has been very lucky and very easy. I think Malcolm Reynolds um, very tough. He keeps, he's a very <laughs> unlucky guy. Uh, to the best of his ability, he tries to make things run smooth, and nothing ever works out in his favor. If he wins, it's just barely because he fought dirty, you know? He mm -hmm. has to, he gets so dirty and he doesn't walk into a bar and kick everybody's ass and That's he's okay. Job. That's her job. <laughs> Malcolm fights and loses like crazy. Malcolm gets his ass kicked and that's what I like about him. A guy who he continually gets kicked and kicked and kicked and, uh, and, and won't lay down. You did great with your first question. That was good. <laughs> <laughs> You're sorry. You're saying <laughs> you both talked about friendship on the set and in real life um, for the next three movies. <laughs> Thank you. You have to to forget about two of, of the crew because they're dead. Why? I, Why do you think uh, these two characters had to to die? Now, are you, when are you gonna? put this story out. Are you going to spoil the movie for people? No. Okay. Uh, you know why? Because Joss Whedon serves the narrative. He serves the story. There's really, if you're saying this group of people are willing to lay down their lives for this idea and then nobody dies, well, what's the sense? Unless there's a sacrifice, unless someone lays down their life, it means nothing. The dedication, the, uh, the choice, the decision. What do you, what do you think? Well, I think, it's, I think it's really hard as, as, as friends with these actors and just loving, loving the characters. It's really hard to see any, any sacrifices made, but I think it makes the movie so much more powerful. And Joss let Summer decide uh, who, got, who got to die. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> <laughs> just picked it out of the hat. <laughs> What if it had been used? It says, she reads it, it, goes, it says, Summer Glau, she says, <laughs> Ron Glass. <laughs> <laughs> you like that? That was good. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> she picks up the next one, it's still Summer Glau. She's <laughs> they all say Summer Glau. There's, there's Nathan filling them up. <laughs> Are you being serious? You really? Oh, no, 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 teasing, no. I'm teasing. You, yeah, I, I lie constantly. 
that in mind. <laughs> As you just said, um, Mel is a person easy not to like. Yes. So, and he's keeping his distance to his crew, and there's no friendships and things like that. So, um, and how do you act in real life? How important is friendship to you? Oh, very. I have, um, the thing is, I have a very tight circle of friends. If you want to be one of my good, good friends, you're going to have to wait for one of mine to die <laughs> because, you know, my, my circle's very tight. Um, and, and you're on the inside, so you don't have to kill anybody. <laughs> <laughs> I know how. <laughs> Seriously, uh, I, he, things that you do for your friends, I'm always saying, wow, you, I can't believe what a generous friend you are. He wouldn't tell people this, but you are incredibly generous with your friends. Uh, I'm glad you think You so. are so loyal. He's, uh, he's the man to have on your team. He's the man to be the captain. <laughs> Thanks. No, he really is. He's an example to all of us. Um, and, you know, and I just have to say that um, I think that the reason why our chemistry turned out the way it did in the beginning was that he came in um, as the lead, as, as the number one actor, and he just, he set the precedence for our attitude um, on set. He was always happy to be there, and we knew, God, that he was so exhausted because out of everybody, he had, like, twice as much dialogue he had to be on set all the time. If he sat down in his chair, he would fall asleep. He would have to stand up and walk around and say his dialogue and say his dialogue. But he was so happy to be there. And it really, it was, it was a, a humbling experience for me to see somebody have the right attitude about working and the right attitude about being in charge, you know, being the number one guy. I learned a lot from you. You're going to make me cry again. <laughs> what about the fans? Did you uh, receive uh, 100 letters a day? Please make this movie, do it, do it. Or what about the fans? So the time, you. You, know what, you know when I got the most letters? Mm. Um, I, I was thinking, what can I do personally to get more people to watch Firefly? So uh, we had the internet. This is the, one of the greatest things about this was the people on the internet. Yeah. Uh, you could immediately contact the fans. You put it on there, an hour later, they all know. And I put a letter on the internet saying, we need more people watching, so here's what you're going to do. Friday nights, 8 o'clock, you're going to have people over at your house, and you're going to have a shindig. You're going to have a firefly <laughs> viewing party. Um, if you mail me a self-addressed stamped envelope, I will mail you an autograph photo and a recipe for low-fat bean dip. Oh, it's the best seven, bean dip in the seven world. Seven-layer low-fat bean dip. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and, and that you can serve at your, you know, mm -hmm. it would be, be Captain Malcolm Reynolds' seven-layer low-fat bean dip. Bless you. And uh, that, I got a lot of letters. I got a lot of letters. It's worth it. <laughs> I'd send you an envelope, too. <laughs> Get your bean dip recipe. <laughs> I think that's I don't think they can, because I don't think Serenity takes itself too seriously. Mm. I think Serenity is, uh, I, uh, help me out here, because I just uh, had a brain fart. I, no, I don't, I don't think our fans, I think our fans get incredibly attached to the characters, and I think you see from uh, the way some of them reacted to uh, deaths that happened, um, shows how emotionally invested they are, but, um, we can't we can't criticize them for their intense love because we we wouldn't be here without them and uh, I think that you do have to put your whole heart into it as actors I know that we we really took it seriously I mean we laughed every day and we don't take ourselves seriously as actors but we take our movie seriously we love it all the way and uh, everybody involved did. I remember one day going, we had finished shooting principal photography a long time before, but we went one day to go watch Lonnie and the rest of the, the uh, special effects guys shoot one of our battle scenes. 
and they were so in love with their with their models of our ship and of the reaver ships so this intense love for what they'd done and it was really beautiful and that's every scene in the movie is like that and i think you do have to take it seriously but laugh every day too yeah the brown coats though here's here's what i love about the brown coats they wear those goofy orange jane hats uh, this is, these are fans those. not taking themselves too seriously <laughs> you know what i mean yeah. <laughs> Although the knits hat mm -hmm. he gets from his mother. That's the one. Mm -hmm. Fans are wearing those. Those are everywhere. <laughs> Cunning hat. Oh. Bless him. Yeah. Did you said you uh, used to be a ballet dancer. Did, did, did you plan to become an actress? Or was that an accident? When I was a little girl, I, I, uh, I practiced my speeches and I... I put on plays for myself in the backyard, and would you I arrange your dolls myself. like an audience? Yes. <laughs> would you? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Remember this one time I had this idea I was going to do a singing show, and it was freezing cold outside, but I wanted to wear this sparkling swimsuit and a boa, and that's it. <laughs> and my mom got so mad. She said, "Summer, I know what you're going to do, and you go back in your bedroom and you change clothes right now." So I put on this coat. When I got outside, I took it off. I got so sick, but I did a great show. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, I mean, I always had this feeling I was going to be an actress, but, you know, in Texas, there's a lot of dancing. And when I started dancing, I, I, I had a gift for it. And, you know, I got swept up in it, and it became my, my world. And not until I was injured did I ever think of switching to acting. And thank goodness that happened. I'm so happy. Acting. And did Joss Whedon have a hand in that? You, you played a ballet, ballet oh, dancer yes. on, on Angel. When I first came to LA, people said, don't tell anyone you're an, a dancer because they'll think you know, that you're a dancer trying to be an actress. So just you know, make stuff up. I would, say, I would say that I was an actress in a show that I had really danced in. Oh, yes, yes, that was this role. Um, what role was that? Oh, you know. Um, and I would, I would hide it. But then that role came up to play a ballerina, and that's the, that was it. For me, from then on, started working with Joss, and now here I am. So it worked out in the end. Are you fine? Yeah. <laughs> Are we? It's one last change. Oh. One last group. So I'm going to be the one group. Thank you very much, you guys. Thank you. Thank you. All of it, right?